In this video, we're going to break down the Spotify data scientist interview process and interview questions. Starting with the TLDR, they expect you to be passionate and thoughtful about music. It is not a lighthearted talking point. It is actually the basis of the hardest part of their technical screen. Their rounds are more practical than theoretical, and their interviewers tend to be friendly and conversational. Spotify has an emphasis on technical communication. They hold interview candidates to a higher bar of technical communication than the status quo in a lot of tech companies. In part, this is because Spotify is a company with a weak team concept. What that means is work is mainly assigned to individuals as opposed to teams, and work is driven primarily through interpersonal connections rather than process. If you can imagine, process is reduced so that the individual is the one that's responsible. And that's why communication is more important because you do more cross-functional communication just to get stuff done. That's why they have a higher emphasis on making sure your technical communication chops are sharp. They also value autonomy. That goes in part with their weak team concept. And the hardest part of their interview process is gonna be that panel presentation. This is where candidates tend to get rejected or downleveled and it usually happens decidedly. The only thing you need to remember about Spotify is do what Einstein says. Einstein says, if you can't explain it to your grandma, then you don't understand it. Act as if you're talking to your grandma when explaining things at Spotify. Spotify data scientists work in a product data science model, which is pretty cool. So they're embedded on a team with a PM and a user researcher. Their interview process will reflect that. So later, the rounds will be with a PM and a UX researcher and data scientist, hiring manager too, but they're trying to plug you in to that same kind of model that you'd be working with on the job. In that model, data scientists get to work with PMs and engineers to run experiments, define the roadmap, and drive data-informed decisions for the business. Less so model building, less so deploying models. That's more on the ML engineers at Spotify. Big focus on experiments and A-B tests. You've got to brush up on your statistics knowledge and causal inference to detect causal effects when you can't run an experiment. Standard stack of SQL and Python, and they use uh, BigQuery for data warehousing. The cool thing about Spotify is if the data gets too much to manage, they have these people that work in between scientists and engineers. These are the data analytics engineers. Spotify prefers candidates who understand experimentation, statistics, and machine learning, and you gotta be able to present tactical findings to technical and non-technical folks alike. They pay okay compared to the rest of big tech. Here is their corresponding levels and average total compensation packages. They have a equal split to their vesting schedule, but they actually do a three-year vesting schedule. So it's split out evenly, but instead of the traditional four years, it's actually three years, which is better for candidates because you get your stock sooner. Before you apply, it is very important to make technical communication your most obvious strength. Maybe take a public speaking class or some kind of communication class just to get your communication up to where it needs to be to shine at Spotify. Especially the more senior you are, this gets more important. Developing some opinions about music, it's not so you can have some lighthearted conversational discussion. It's more because they're going to ask you in your take home that they give you a week to do and then present at the onsite. They're going to ask you what makes a playlist successful. Throughout the rounds, they're going to ask you what trends you're interested in music. So you're not doing this to have just some random water cooler talk. You're actually doing this because that's what you'd be doing on the job is figuring out these kind of ambiguous problems that have to do with music. Lastly, out of all the data scientists that they hire, Spotify's most common data scientist is a senior data scientist. So make sure that you're not showcasing yourself to be at a lower level than you actually want to be seen as. For their interview process, they do some interviewer training. That's probably why their interviewers tend to be conversational and friendly. Also, there's not a lot of oversight for the questions that they ask. So interviewers can ask whatever they want, but because it's a pretty repeatable process, they tend to ask the questions that are suggested to them. If you kind of zoom out and think about how Spotify is different from other companies, Spotify is more like Google. They care about how the most, how you come to your solution. Whereas Amazon and maybe Meta would be in this category too, they care about what, what was your solution? Did you get it right and on time? 
So there are four stages to their interview process, recruiter screen, tech screen, hiring manager, and final round. The recruiter screen, pretty normal. I would just say that the only other additional things you need to do besides your normal recruiter screen would be have questions ready that actually have to do with your opinions on music, meaning like what trends in music are you interested in lately or probably not what makes a playlist successful. That'll happen later, but even like being ready to show that you're passionate about music, even if it's only in one or two questions. The tech screen follows a recruiter round, and this is going to be a one-hour coder pad round split between three different functions, SQL, Python, and statistics. SQL is going to be pretty basic, not going to really go into super complex things, like not even like as complex as like window functions. So in line with their focus on technical communication, you don't want to be seen as someone who just hears the question and then writes the query and then thinks they're done. You want to show yourself as being more senior and not viewing the SQL questions as the time to write SQL, but instead connecting it back to why it matters. So before you dive in, make sure you know why you're writing the query or make sure you're actually telling them why you're writing the query based off your assumptions. The coding portion is going to be easy to medium data structures, sometimes lumpy, sometimes pandas. Again, people really get rejected because of communication. So it's actually worth going through a quick example here. Knowing the answer isn't enough at Spotify. If you don't communicate it so everyone understands, you're not correct. So if they ask you how to define a p-value, don't answer how you would to another data scientist. Don't say the p-value is at the level of marginal significance within a statistical hypothesis test, representing the probability of the occurrence of a given event. Instead, say the p-value is the probability that what happened was due to random chance rather than something meaningful or interesting. The hiring manager round. This is going to be mainly behavioral. Sometimes we'll get a small case study, but it's the only one-on-one -on -one time you have the hiring manager and the whole process. You'll see them again when you present your case study, but this is the only one-on-one -on -one time. Make sure you leave your hiring manager with the impression that you can work autonomously. Okay, before your final round interview, you're going to get a week to complete the take-home assignment that you then present your findings of and business recommendations at the on-site. The prompt of this case study is, what makes a playlist successful? Your panel at the onsite will be a small group of five-ish people, and it's gonna include sometimes the people that would do the rounds after that panel, but the rounds after the panel will be product manager, user researcher, and another data scientist at a minimum. The case study presentation. This really is the crux of the entire interview process. It's where you're gonna pass or fail, get down leveled or get leveled at the actual level that you want. So. Focus on technical communication. Remember, you're presenting complex analysis to stakeholders who aren't really well-versed in statistics. So present your presentation to the least technical person in the room to make sure everybody gets it. Don't dive in too low level to start with. Start with a high level overview, perhaps tying it into some company key goals, and then briefly describe how this case study relates to each. The key here is not to be seen as more junior by just coming in, presenting your findings, showing your insights, and stopping. Take it a step further to be seen as more senior. Present those findings, share those insights, and then recommend some next steps. Act as if you're already working there. You've been given an ambiguous problem, and now you're going to break it down to a business recommendation for something we can put on the roadmap. Behavioral. Spotify's round for behavioral is actually pretty easy. In a way, it kind of reflects their origins. They're a Swedish company, so, so they tend to be warm people who strive for consensus. You can kind of feel this in these behavioral rounds. So it's not an Amazon-like company who's going to grade you on specific traits. It's more of a Microsoft where they may have a specific culture, but they don't really have a specific cultural screen. They just want to make sure you communicate well, you're friendly enough, and you can do the work. Again, the only actual difference there is that higher bar for how good your technical communication is. The SQL and Python round is not going to be hard compared to a lot of other rounds in tech. Instead, they just want to make sure you can do the basics. The only kind of note here is that the Python portion has failed more often than the SQL portion, but probably because most data scientists are more comfortable using Python than SQL. Another key point, again, tying into this higher level knowledge is higher level communication. Don't just dive in and define that solution. Instead, before you dive in, ask clarification questions revolving around the words, why? Why are we running this experiment? Or what? What are the key learnings we're trying to get from this experiment? 
That way you fully understand the scope before diving in. Statistics. They're huge on experimentation on their actual day-to-day -day work as data scientists and A-B testing. So you're gonna get grilled on A-B testing and experimentation. For any kind of trivia question you get asked at Spotify, just remember, assume that they're asking you to explain it to a non-technical person. This is better than just trying to explain it to someone who's your peer. For that product manager round, remember that Spotify is a product-driven company. So anytime, and this maybe goes for all the rounds, but especially with the PM, anytime you can discuss pro small product changes, you can actually eat up a lot of time by kind of investigating that. It's helpful because in every interview round, you have to do a little bit of improvisation, but it's easier to improv if you know what direction you're going in. So in this case, go in the direction of tiny product changes, such as, you know, if we gave the people the chance to thumbs down a song, I could see it might cause this effect based on what I know here. Experimentation. This round is going to be another data scientist, and they are going to grill you. That's probably the second hardest round following the case study and the entire process. Um, this, again, because that's true, is going to determine your level more than any other round that's not the case study. User research. Because they have those cool data science models where the data scientist is plugged in on this little pod with another PM and another user researcher, these user researchers are going to ask you questions like you're already working on the job, like, you know, stuff having to do with their recommendation engine, which is the lifeblood of their business, the personalization engine. So get ready to have those conversations. If you want to crush your Spotify data scientist interview, check out our data science interview prep course. We go over data modeling, take home assignments, data communication, behavioral modeling, SQL, statistics, and way more. Try it for free at tryexponent.com.